Welcome back to Face to Facts. I'm your host, Nick Face. Sitting to my left this wonderful, dreary morning here yeah, is, dreary. is Phil Healy. Welcome, Phil. Hey, how you doing, Nick? Nice to see you back here again. Likewise, nice to be back. Thank it you is for nice me. to be back. It's been quite a run for the lovely Boston Celtics. Yeah. And we I don't think we've really had a good, good enough chance this fall to really get a chance to talk about the Celtics as of yet. As many of you know... The Celtics went through an offseason of move after move, after signing, after signing, hmm. after drafting, after drafting. Yep. It's been a dynamic team and a very fun team to watch so far in this early season. And right now the Celtics are on a 16-game yeah. winning streak. How about that? What are your overall thoughts, just from what you've been able to see and watch? Well, I will have to say, first off, i got to say, Look back at the last episode we did because it, it I think it was before the first game of the season or a week before the first game and we're like yeah Gordon Haywood's gonna be a part we're all chipper and that's just right right face and now it's raining here today and we're all we're like, but, uh, but it's really not a dark no, and dreary kind no, of team it isn't not at all uh, but and I shouldn't I apologize for framing it like that but no it's just so weird because we we're in such a different state at the beginning of the year yep and then literally like five minutes into the first quarter first game. Which was actually a good game, uh, a good game. regardless, uh, yeah. the opening night in Cleveland. And it was actually a good game when Gordon was on the floor. Like, you know, he goes down and everyone's like, season, oh, season's bye -bye. over. Or at least the season isn't what you thought it would be. But, you know, we, as Bill Walton uh, said about Larry Bird, uh, in reference to winning with a, that game like five, Eastern Conference Championship That's what against it was. Detroit. Yep. Yep. We forgot about Larry Bird. We forgot about Kyrie Irving. We did. We forgot, so, we forgot about Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum. Al Horford, about Al Horford going Horford. crazy. Uh, uh, Jalen Brown going nuts. Marcus Smart uh, for all his uh, <laughs> offensive ineptitude. Um, mm -hmm. At least during this part of the season or the beginning. But we forgot about like Brad Stevens. We forgot like what made this team the last like three or four years. Regardless if they were a number one seed or they just squeaked into the playoffs under they an eight or seven. They have been competitive. Yeah, it's been, that's, exa that's the word, man. They've been competitive, and it's been fun, like you said, to watch them compete. Why do you think a lot of people some, or a lot of teams, if a player goes down, you know, sometimes with a gruesome injury or not, how are other teams able to rally around that? Like, that's just amazing to me. Like, mm. if one, like let, let, let's... let's pretend that we're players on the, on the Celtics, which would never happen in a million years, but sure, I mean, but we can pretend that we, life, we yeah. were teammates and one of our star, superstar play, you know, superstar, all-star player goes down. I mean, how would you feel? I, I would feel down. I would feel, how are we going to do this? Not for one second did they doubt themselves. No, I mean, I don't think so, but that whole first game was, like, ever, even Cleveland side, the whole, the whole arena was deflated yep. when that happened, and it seemed like they exercised everything in that one, like, game, mm -hmm. like, because it didn't, you could say that that game counts, and it doesn't, because, you know, they lost by, what, they lose by two or three? Just two or three points, yeah. yeah. And, and Kyrie, I thought he actually had that shot, that yeah. last shot, he had a good look, but yeah, I, how do you do it? I don't know, but it allowed a kismet, it allowed Jason Tatum more minutes. Uh, Jalen Brown was already going to be a starter, but mm -hmm. he kind of, he's up this game, it's seem, seemingly. And, yeah, you have the uh, second-year player in Brown and rookie in Tatum, mm -hmm. and you have all these other guys, like Shane Larkin, mm -hmm. uh, Michael Ogilvy, or is it Mike? Aaron Baines. Aaron, ba Aaron Baines has been great. Nick Tice has been great. Like, all these guys. In a way. Big players. Not that you ever wanted to see Gordon Hayward go down, no. but you're able to see more production from players that you weren't going to be counting on as many for minutes. Yeah, step in and produce. And the person, oh, the player that I like the most from being able to see him, it, and it's it's Brown and Tatum. Yeah, those guys are stars. Yeah. They are they are raw, still young, the yeah. building blocks of the Celtics, and the building is now. Yeah, they can do it. They they. They can play. Tatum, like they're, on the whole, Tatum looks like he's been in the years, uh, been in the league, pardon me, been in the league like four or five years. Like, on the whole, like through his first like 18 games, mm -hmm. he looks like a pro. I mean, and what was it? The Dallas game on Monday we were talking about uh, yeah. previously. Like that last possession in, 
and uh, not it was in regulation. Ky- I, I remember what it was. Wasn't yeah. it the one where Kyrie had that really awesome pass and he was able to get the oh yeah the alley oop on it? There were two of them. There were two. Yeah. Of them, but I, uh, actually, yeah, how they get back in it, and that's one thing too. He'll hustle. You'll see like a loose ball, like Smart or Irving or yes. how Horford pick it up, or even Brown. And, or, you know, either or, you'll see whoever pick up the ball, and you'll see Brown or Tatum on the other end. Yep. Like, just there, be it their youth or just like, bam, to the basket. Right. But Tatum, actually, the last possession of regulation for Dallas, he was pit one-on-one against uh, Barnes, the guy yep. who had the hot hand for Dallas, yep. pretty much third quarter on. Yep. It didn't, I wouldn't say he shut him down, but he played like he did, wasn't, wasn't shook off. Yep. He stayed with him, contested the shot. And, you know, it's lucky the shot didn't go because that easily could have went, but he just mm-hmm. he missed it enough to, uh, to throw him off. So. so during this winning streak, it's now at 16 games. 16. Yeah. This might be an obvious answer, but we still got to ask it. Which of the games has stood out to you the most out of this 16-game run? You know what? I, I wish I saw the uh, Oklahoma City one. Okay. Because that seems like something that's... Golden State obviously was kind of great because it seemed like Golden State was actually playing a game. Yep. Whether or not it was their playoff basketball or not is a different story. But they were they yep. seemed like they were playing a re- like all right we're here we're not phoning it in mm-hmm. we're playing a regular season game. Yep. And it seemed like that was good enough. It didn't yeah. seem to me from watching the Golden State game that Golden State was not trying. Yeah. They they were legitimately trying to compete with the Celtics and they couldn't. Uh, well, I think they could, but it just went. I think they are two well-matched teams. Yep. I, I think the Celtics really and Brad Stevens have Golden State's number as far. Well, number is strong, but they know they have a formula to get at them. Yep. I'm sure in a series they'd go back and forth, and you might have a lopsided victory from I, Golden I, State. I could, I could, I could a see tight. a couple of that in, in, yeah. in a series. It would be interesting. I think in a short, like a so, like a solo game, the Celtics have the upper hand. I think so. Yeah. I think it comes down to a one-game thing. You know, they they have it. And it Keep in mind, and people have been saying, you know, uh, C. Curry or Steph Curry, sorry, will not have a um, not a nine point like was he three for like thirteen? He, he mm. didn't have a good game. No, but it wasn't a good shooting game for everyone. Like no, no one wasn't. shot well. No. I mean Celtics or the um, Celtics got the big shots they, when they needed. They did. That's what it was. Yeah. But the thing that we haven't really talked about the most that has impressed me the most no on the one. team. It's something that people doubted at the very beginning of the season. Oh, what, the defense? It's the defense. They're the number one ranked defense in the NBA. Where did this come from? Oh, you have the coach? You have, where is the, it has what's the, to. What's the it common denominator to. in that? It has to be and Brad Al, Stevens. Al Horford, too. Like, we, as much as we were kind of, we were cursed. Don't you mean average Al? Average Al. <laughs> what, which you had said before we started, too. Like, Kyrie is a guy who seemingly makes everyone better. Mm-hmm. I mean, IT... And Al made each other better, and uh, you might even say that Al made IT better a little mm-hmm. bit, and because Al was around, IT could get some more shots. Yep. But it might seem like the reverse now, with Kyrie being in there opening think, things up. Looking back on last year, that Horford, it was good. Don't get me wrong, but I think a little bit under the expectation level on what some people expected. Sure, people were expecting bit. a blowout thing, but he's he's not that type of player. He isn't though. that type. No. But I think the surrounding cast that he has right now will not make him so much of an average Al. I think you're going to be oh. seeing um, a not-so-average Al. I think you're seeing a player that is trusted with his teammates, yeah. that if he needs to get the big shots, going to do it. You know, he'll have some nights that he'll be able to, you know, maybe get eight points or ten points, minimal, minimal yeah. amount on the scoring board. But he's going to be doing something impactful. He's going to have, yeah, he'll have like 10 or 15 rebounds. Yeah. Uh, five or six, and he'll like check his stat sheet through for the season. You know, whether it, it, it's roughly, I don't know his average, but it's roughly you'll get roughly 15 to 17 points, maybe like mm-hmm. that many rebounds or a bit less, and maybe like five to six to seven assists. You'll get like something shy of a triple double every night that he'll yep. he'll just be there, he'll be there for Kyrie. And uh, he's been another A word uh, for a, uh, not necessarily average, but another A word you can throw out there aggressive. He's been more aggressive, aggressive on a lot of... I, I like that. Yeah, well, he's, well, he has been. He's been able to... He has the, been. The Golden State game, a great example of that putback. Kyrie misses, and then like two or three people follow Kyrie, and then who's there to box Al out Horford's Big Al? Right there. Yeah, he's right there, and he just slams it down. And he yep. just... 
And there were a couple of times that he just kind of ran down the lane. He just walked down the lane because people opened it up and weren't thinking of him, just yep. like taking charge. Yep. And I'm excited about this. As much as I, I am excited about this team, I, I, I think um, you know how much of a big Red Sox fan and everything I am. And I, do, I, yeah. I think the I think the Celtics are have raised a new level of the excitement level for me now. I, you guys know from watching Face the Facts, I'm sure that I'm, I've been very down on the Sox. But a team that gets it, buys into the system, is producing, is very exciting. Yeah. Very yeah. exciting to watch. You're, they're a sit-down must-see right now each yeah. night. Is the Celtics. Um, here's a big question for you. Do you have sure. a favorite player on the Celtics right now? Um, well, I, it's very tough. It's it tough. Is tough. It, and that's a, <laughs> it's a, what was it, um, or... I forget what the term is, but we're damned by the riches mm -hmm. that were kind of laid before us. Or example of rich, I forget what the term is. I always butcher terms uh, or phrases. But, yeah, I love Tatum a lot. I love Brown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love I guess, like, Tatum right now is just my favorite. I like watching him. Like You can almost watch him subdivide grow. it. You can yeah, say you could. who out of the rookies or the younger yeah, class is that's a good point. one of yeah. your favorite guys. Then you can have who's one of your middlers, maybe someone that's yeah. on the bench or... Maybe maybe one of the fourth or fifth guys. Oh, in Terry Rozier, and I can't can't go. Great great mention right there. Oh, he's awesome, and I think I said at the beginning, like the last show, be on the lookout for him because he's a guy. You taking that point from Gary Tangway? <laughs> oh, I, oh, what I mentioned. He, he was I, his unsung hero yeah, for the yeah, season. Yeah. yeah. Oh, was he? Yeah, he Is was. He said? Yeah, he's no. the one. Watch out for watch out for uh, Rose Ter Terry Rozier. Well, from the playoffs last year, uh, he can, he can hit big shots. Yeah. His defense is, like, it's pretty good. Like, you don't think Rose, like, maybe he hasn't had enough time in the spotlight to to really present himself as a defensive player. And, you yeah. know, he's on the Celtics, so maybe, like, oh, defense is not first, but it's it's, it's prominent yeah. uh, for each player. But he, he's really good. And when he, I Very think good. he covered, uh, he was one of the four or five guys who covered Steph Curry. Yeah. And that was the thing, um, back to the exciting to watch him play. Kyrie even said, like, I think after the Dallas game, it's like we're just going out there and we're just playing, like, street, not street ball, but we're all on the court. Or it's like we're outside and we're kids again. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how when they get there and when they start playing with each other and just, like, they'll get down by 13, 14, you know, 17 or 19 mm -hmm. to Golden State, 13 to Dallas, 18 to uh, OKC or whatever. And then it'll just kind of just, hey, let's just play ball. Fourth and, quarter clicks in, boom. Yeah. Oh, it's just locked like you, in. And you, yeah, locked in. And like you said, I think before we got rolling, you know, Kyrie comes in. He will, he'll take over. Yeah. And you watch. You're like, oh, wow. And I, like I said before we started rolling, too, we'll get the benefit of a lot of call. We'll get, like, those LeBron type of calls. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing he can thank LeBron for, I think, with yeah. that association. But also he's a known player, and he, he learned it. Well, I know some fans or some viewers may have – probably raised a red flag when Kyrie was originally traded here. There was a couple people that had, were critics. Mm. Oh, I don't love this move, that you just traded your face of the franchise, which was Isaiah. Yeah. You know, you got rid of some players that could have been impactful on the season. Gabriel Bradley. Exactly. Which was one of my favorite guys. Lo and behold, Kyrie comes in yeah. with a little bit of baggage. You know, sure. he did not oh, have a very, very, very nice parting way no, he, with the he, Cleveland Cavaliers. He, he has to be he traded. He absolutely despised yeah. playing with, with uh, LeBron. Well, do you think he despised playing with LeBron or despised the situation it was leading up to? I think he, prob I think he a little bit of both. Okay, I don't yeah. think he legit liked playing with LeBron. Okay, I enough. think LeBron is... I'm not a big LeBron I know fan. You're not. I'm not. I know you're not. And it's I, tough around here to be one. I, I don't like the way you can't take away the talent. Yes, he's oh, talented. No, he's he's and one all. of the easily the top five. But players he's got to be the most egotistical athlete outside of Alex Rodriguez well, yeah. I've ever watched in my life. I mean, I, don't, I can't speak to that as much, but I can yeah. definitely see that being a thing. I haven't listened to him talk as much as I. And I, I should, think I Kyrie knew that he was second fiddle. I think Kyrie knew that coming to Boston and sure. everything. Stevens could make him a star, and he could build around the rest of the players and be viewed in a way different light than he was than being LeBron's yeah. puppet master. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, and LeBron pulling the strings or whatever, but okay. So, yeah, and, and the other critics were saying, like, the defense wouldn't be as The good. defense wouldn't be And there Brian Scalabrini, who's rescinded his... Yes, um, the lucky his, leprechaun. Yeah, the lucky... Uh, the white... Uh, no, he... the. Oh, what's his snake name? Because it's a... Uh, is it White Mamba? Yeah, he's the, the white, white Mamba. He's the White yeah, Mamba. The White Mamba. 
<laughs> when he was playing with Chicago. But uh, yeah, no, he rescinded like, oh, they, their defense is great. He was, he's like, I was wrong. Mm -hmm. But yeah, because I remember when they traded Avery, they traded uh, IT, and uh, IT, you know, and that was actually something on the other end too. People were in favor of Kyrie Irving. Yeah. Which I'll be honest, like you say, it trading the face in IT of your organization, you gain. It's a big move. It is a big move. It's big a move. bold move. Yeah. But also, and they kind of knew, you know, how much how hurt he was, and IT. I think he's like twenty eight or twenty. I don't. I don't think. See. I like Isaiah's attitude. You might see him come oh. back and, and produce and yeah, be okay. Of but I don't think it's going to happen with LeBron. No way. You never know. I mean, IT is quiet enough, passive aggressive enough, maybe, but like quiet enough to kind of take it. And, Kyrie, and, and you know that uh, he, he does not like this move at all. He did not want to be in no, Cleveland. He, well, I think he felt disrespected by, by Danny Ainge. By Danny Ainge. And yeah. he's been clear on that. And I understand. I mean,. Dan, Dan, Dan Ainge has done this, and as, a, as an owner or a GM or what, not an owner, but a GM, you have to make that decision. But yeah, Ray Allen's another example who yep. was kind of disheartened by the whole process. And, you know, that's, that's a business, but still, it's, it's, there's a, it, it sucks because it's so cold. How I mean, much do you trust Danny Ainge on the trust level? Oh, just for making moves and to getting... Make, to making the moves that he's done. Uh, yeah, I mean, he, his track record's pretty good. Yep. It's not... I, Jason Tatum pickup was pretty good. I don't know what they saw there or what they had because... See, I, that's the thing that kinda, I look at and yeah. just say to myself. Maybe injury reports, too, is a Boy, big what a genius. You got Fultz, who's been hurt. And maybe he lucked out. I don't know. But, yeah, Fultz has been hurt. You got yeah. Lonzo Ball with his father fighting with Donald Trump right now. Uh, I mean, but that, what a train wreck of a situation that, that is. That seemed like if he wasn't going to be in L.A., there'd be problems anyway, like on Would've top been. of it. Yeah. But... I don't know. Lonzo Imagine Ball. him being here with the, the Celtics oh. would never be doing as well as they are That'd now. Be what crazy. a distraction. That'd be crazy. Just crazy. And I also don't think as much as Lonzo Ball's put up, you know, triple doubles and I know, haven't really and everything, fallen. I've... his shot is not made for the NBA. Is it? It's just not. Because he, he takes a, too long. He with takes it, too it? long when he shoots. And that's yeah. just an to me, that's just an automatic red flag on the play. Yeah. So I really like what Danny Ainge did with trading trading down to get the number three, which was Tatum. Yeah. Tatum fits the system, and you're seeing it in just really a few sample size games right now. Yeah. Imagine what you have two, three, four years down the line with Tatum that's in there. Yeah. It's true. It's a really good situation to be in, and I'm, you know, as this is our Thanksgiving show, yeah. I am very you thankful think, yeah. for Danny Ainge today for his yeah. wonderful moves and bold moves that he's been able to make for... The Celtics. Yeah, and even, like, throw, I mean, as much as the Hayward thing is a travesty, I mean, throw that in there. I mean, he, he only played, like, five minutes for a quarter, but, like, you'll have that, like, the team you have now, you'll have him back. Who knows what that will do with dynamic. Mm -hmm. Maybe that takes away from Tatum. Maybe Tatum's, and Tatum being on your second string mm -hmm. and able to, like, kind of throw that in there. I mean, the one, the big strength of the Celtics last year, and you could say the year before, oh, excuse me, is that their bench was pretty deep. Mm -hmm. Like, their bench, their second uh, string was probably maybe the best in the NBA because, like, the whole team was full of, not second stringers, but, like, yeah, roughly not, like, not all superstars. You had not Al all, Horford yeah. in IT, and maybe that was, maybe the, that's it, maybe for, like, superstars. And you had people like Avery Bradley who was on starting five. But then you, like, kind of would rotate in, like Jay Crowder, yeah. Rozier, Smart, and all these other guys who... Could viably be a number one. Anybody from the team this year that you missed from last year? Yeah, I mean Bradley. I mean I miss yeah. just having him, but I mean it seems like they has have he pretty much people. been replaced? No yeah. way. I mean he has, yeah. but yeah. Uh, and actually I think it was Asheron Blakely. I was listening to him yeah. and he was talking about. I think it was Asheron. They call him A S. Yeah, from another type. <laughs> but we, uh, he was talking about how Jalen Brown is kind of, and he has taken uh, Bradley's spot. I, I would agree on, on that. And yeah, he's, uh, I mean, as far, I don't know the numbers per se scoring wise, but he's been a good rebounder. And that's another thing Tatum and Brown have been excellent have been rebounders. excellent on that. Excellent, excellent. rebounders. Yep. Um, it's, it's the length of those guys to defend and to rebound. Like Tatum in the Dallas game, as you probably saw at the end, mm -hmm. Tatum had like three or four big rebounds at the last, like, he he was awesome Bunch on of possessions, it. Yeah. He was awesome on it. And I'm hoping that we see more of that, you know, as this season goes on. I'm sure. How long do you think this streak's going to happen or continue? Uh, you know what? Uh, the fantasy... Are we looking too much into it? 
I mean, I can. I mean, a streak I, is a streak. A streak is a streak. I mean, I really could care less in my my eyes. I want to see them really produce in the playoffs when yeah. it matters. Oh, of course, of yeah. course. And like it's the same thing when you talk about the Patriots. When it's like, come at me in January. You know what I mean? Or what they used to say about the Yankees in the '90s yeah. or 2000s. Uh, come talk to us in October. Yeah. So yeah, this is great right now, and yeah. for like a historical kind of uh, perspective, I'd love to see it. Go to twenty because what nineteen is is uh, twenty is better than nineteen. Twenty is better than nineteen. Yeah. But nineteen is, I think is the longest. Now was that that was the second I, year KG was I there. I don't want it to go to like how Golden State was doing was had had their streak and I don't want to see that because that's when you injure players and hurt them. Well, that's and a good point. Actually. I don't want to see that. I want to see them you know at some point maybe end up losing just yeah. a game so they can get it out of their head and and, and yeah. stop focusing on just the win. The, it's a marathon. The main not a goal. Yeah. The main goal here has to be to make sure that you, I would say, get to the finals. Is that too high of a? No, I don't. I don't. An think expectation. I don't think it's too high of an. I think it's. Do I think they can get past Cleveland? I mean, once again, at it's tough in February and March. Let's see where things are with them. Let's see, you know, yep. knock on knock on yeah, wood. Knock on wood. Right? Let's see how um, how well they're doing. How uh, how healthy everyone is. Mm -hmm on the seas and how Cleveland's doing. Because you're still going to have to go through Cleveland you are. to get there. You I mean, are. We just want to go over the Patriots very quickly. Sure, they had, yeah. they came off another great win against the Oakland. Is it the Oakland Raiders still? The Oakland Raiders. LA I think Raiders, be, whatever you call no, it. No, I keep thinking they're going to Las Vegas. I, can't I think they're going keep, to Las Vegas. I can't I keep track of it between the L.A. Chargers, the San Diego. Char Everybody wants to change their names. Yeah. But they had their game in Mexico City this past Sunday. And once again... Like yeah. Patriots tradition, they took care of their opponent very, very easily. Yeah, and it could have been a game. It could have been 14-7 going yes. into the half, but here's the ball. <laughs> it just, it it's just remarkable it to look at what the Patriots went through at the very beginning of the season. Yeah. All of the injuries, all of the adjustments that they have had to make, mm -hmm. and to be at the stage where they are now 8-2 and two on their season. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. They've been able to really gel much better as a team now. Yeah, and, I th and they're feeling it. I think when they went to Denver, and they say, like, for the last three weeks, they've been, like, in the Colorado area. Yeah. And then they made their way they've to Mexico City. They've been at high altitude. Yeah, yes. and it's just kind of crazy. It's like, but that's what we've come to expect. I was and very like pleased that they stayed at Colorado Springs to practice. Yeah, they were at, um, an Air Force base. The right? Air Force base, the Navy. I think oh, it was Navy. the Navy, yeah, right. Navy base. That was great to not come back to Gillette, come back yeah. to the area, because it's a lot different air quality out there. Yeah. They practice out in the, at the naval base and everything to kind yeah. of get themselves acclimated to the environment that Mexico City would bring. Yeah. That was a great thing to do, and that, I think, helped prepare the Patriots to oh, take of care of the Raiders very easily. Of now, the Raiders are a team that's still fighting for a playoff, so I was pretty yeah. surprised to not see so much of a competition in that game. Yeah. Are the Patriots just that far superior? I think it's A and B. I think, because I think the Raiders are like, they were 5-4 and four then, and Kansas City had just lost. Yep. Like to, um, oh, the Giants of all people. Well, the Giants are still a dangerous team, no matter their record. They still are. No they, matter like, what, no defensively, matter what, you got to watch out for you got to watch, because they're, they're sneaky like that. And the NFC is sneaky, too. They're just, the NFC is really good this year. Not to say the AFC is, isn't good, but the NFC just Well, that was my next question I was going to ask you team. because but to, sitting to here finish, right now. To finish up on that last thought. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, no, I, I think, uh, they're, yeah, the Raiders, I, I think they're, they're not done playing for Jack Del Rio, but I think they're just kind of like, I don't think the cohesion is there from last What's year. What's that phrase? Looking on the outside? Kind of. I think so. They're on the in, but they're kind of looking on the outside. But I also bit. think they don't fully believe. I mean, I don't know. I don't know the ins no. and outs of the Raiders, but, but just... A cursory glance kind of feels like, well, maybe it's, and maybe the Pats are just, maybe not not that much better, but like they get a, they get to that point, and we've seen this over the years. They get to a point where they'll get the benefit of like that. They fumble, and then they there's like how many Raiders were there, and like the Pats come up with it, mm -hmm. like because they're they're trained to just kind of like samurai to just go for that ball and just kind of take care of business. I was looking at the schedule after the game just to see what everything looks like. Patriots have one good game left on the season. Oh, the Steelers. The Steelers, yeah. who are 8-2. and two. And we know that the Patriots have had their hand for years. 
I couldn't tell you the last game. time the Steelers beat the Patriots. I couldn't tell you. Probably Matt Castle? I think it was Matt Castle in 08. I mean. Yeah. Are the Patriots once again Super Bowl favorites? I don't know if they're favorites, but uh, to get there, I... Mm. I don't see how they can't get at the Super Bowl right now. I think if they don't get to the Super Bowl, yeah. that's a disappointment. No, I, th- I think we're... I think we're bred for that right now. We are. We're groomed. Which, but it, like you great, said, but, looking yeah. at the AFC, yeah. who? Denver? No. The Steelers. Oakland? No. Steelers? We already know what, what we can do against the Steelers. Yeah. There's no way in but my it, eyes. I think they're a little different this year, but yeah. They, they could be. I mean, we know last year Le'Veon Bell went out. Antonio Brown was completely shut down in the playoff last year. Roethlisberger is a shell of himself. I just don't, I, I don't see, you know, and I, I know people don't like Michael Felger and everything, but Felger said the same thing on the show on Sunday from postgame. I'll see you in Minneapolis. Yeah. And I believe him. You have cupcakes the rest of the season, tomato cans, as Dan Shaughnessy likes to call it. Yeah. A lot of name drops today. We got yeah, Shaughnessy, we Tangway, Sherrod, Felger, Sherrod. Uh, you can tell what uh, we watch and Barkley, listen to. Charles yeah. Barkley, all these people. Well, I mean, you can't get away from it. You can't get away from it, no. no. But I don't see how they can't get there. And my game that I would look for is uh, actually the Eagles. I think it's going to be Eagles Patriots. Yeah, it could be. I think it, you could look at the Eagles and from the NFC. I'm trying to. Patriots win again. And I would, if, if Seattle Seahawks ever get their stuff to, if their coach ever got there, that ship righted then they could be one of the most dangerous teams in the NFL. Because Russell Wilson is a guy, like, I look at that guy, and he just, he runs in the pocket, I'm like, oh, it, like, it doesn't do it justice when you watch it on TV. When you, when you watch, like, the point of view, like the, like the cam on a wire, mm-hmm. going, uh, like, back and forth down the field, yep. like, that guy moves, and how he throws on the move is insane. And it's just, it like, he's so athletic, it's just... You can't count Seattle out, and I yeah. don't like the Seattle Seahawks. <laughs> no. They scare me. No, they are. It just and they it, had a crushing loss on oh, Monday Night uh, Football, which was terrible. Uh, Blair Walsh. Blair Walsh. Blair Walsh again. The I don't legend know how grows. He, yeah, the legend. Yeah, <laughs> that because he was a prolific kicker too. Yeah, because he was with the Vikings and got cut, yeah. and then got, I don't understand why why uh, Seattle got rid of Stephen Hauschka. That was their kicker for yeah, the longest of time. Yeah, I don't know what time. happened. I don't know the like, story behind that. I don't know that. the story Maybe on he that. retired? I don't know. No, Maybe he's just... with Buffalo, I think. Now. Really? Yeah. Weird. Very weird. Maybe they just offered him more Speaking money. Speaking of the kicking, the, one of the last oh, yeah, points sure. that I wanted to bring up, how about Gostowski setting his own personal record? Uh, 62 personal yard... and I think it was the Patriots record. Patriots record and personal. 62-yard field goal. It's crazy. Patriots just get just... just We'll see, man. I mean, I think... Take care of business. Take that should be their the theme song. Take yeah. care of business. And let's hope Jacksonville... I don't know. Jacksonville might have the recipe. J- Jacksonville but. is a, is a, is a very, good, very yeah. good team defensively and everything. So we'll have to see what happens with the Patriots. They have their next game against Miami, which is on Sunday afternoon. Yeah. Phil, I want to wish you a happy Thanksgiving. Oh, likewise, man. Have a happy Thanksgiving. And I hope all of you out there have a wonderful Thanksgiving, too. And we will see you next time on another episode of Face the Facts. Have a great Thanksgiving. We'll see you soon.